This is Roger. Welcome to the What's Up London show. I'm your host, Jennifer Slay. Before we start today, and as always, I want to take this time to acknowledge my ancestors that came before me, as well as express my appreciation and recognition of the privilege I have to live on Indigenous lands, specifically the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapawak, and Ottawandaran peoples. Today's show, we welcome individuals who are strong advocates using their positions to help and to support others. We kick off the show today with Jennifer Hollis, who's the executive director of Will Employment Connections. Since 1984, Will has driven innovative employment solutions to bring immigrants and employers together. They have become a regional leader in delivering, managing, and partnering on publicly funded labor market access initiatives for immigrant talent. Hello, Jennifer, how are you? Very good, thank you for having us here this morning. No problem, thank you for being here. So tell us about Will Employment Connections. Well, Will Employment Connections, we were founded in 1984. Uh, originally, we were founded to serve women immigrants in London, and we've expanded over the years, and now we serve men and women, all, all newcomers and employers across southwestern Ontario. We recently celebrated our 36th year um, celebration in AGM on October 28th. Congratulations. Thank you. So... Tell us, how, how does this work? How do you connect people uh, with one another? Absolutely. So we, we serve uh, newcomers that reach out to us directly. And we also work with many organizations and agencies across southwestern Ontario that refer newcomer talent to us as well. All of our services are free of charge. And when we, when we speak to newcomer talent, anyone that's work authorized, irrespective of any immigration status, and they could be naturalized uh, Canadian at this stage, we are eager and willing to help. As well, simultaneously, we work actively in partnership with employers and businesses in London and across Southwestern Ontario as well. So companies contact us when they're having a particular talent shortage, they're trying to find uh, talent to, to meet their, their skilled needs and priorities, and we're eager to bring immigrants and employers together across the region. That sounds wonderful. And so do you do any scouting outside of the country when you know people are coming in or is it just when people are here? We, one of the things we hope to do in the future is more pre-arrival services, but where we do do a bit of scouting or respectful um, poaching, I would say, from is from the largest metropolitan centers in Canada. So approximately 80% of newcomers, when they first land in Canada, they, they choose, you know, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, we, there's a tremendous supply of talent there and many newcomers that are settled in those largest centers are open and willing to relocate to a mid-sized community or smaller community where they know their skill sets might be recognized for some of the talent needs that are available. So we actively do outreach into those larger centers and welcome talent into our region. Amazing. And so you guys are going through a new branding right now. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So as we started and opened the show, I explained, you know, we used to be women immigrants of London. And in the in the coming years, you'll still start to see us as Will Employment Solutions. So really taking the W-I-L and making it W-I-L-L, -L, we welcome, innovate, learn and lead. We're, we're eager to support um, as many newcomers and employers as possible, really amplify our impact. We know during the pandemic alone, we supported over a thousand newcomers and in, in getting prepared for their job search in Canada and over 555 newcomers were successfully employed and employers are actively reaching out to us not only to hire but also to to be proactive and welcoming and retain talent one of the employers that uh, was a tremendous champion this past year that we recognized was Ahada al Hakim with polyanalytic she's not only been a tremendous ambassador within the company that she serves but also reaching out to businesses across the region because really if business hears from business the value proposition um, and the talent pool available we know that message certainly resonates and we can, can make more impact in that regard mm -hmm. and you know i was reading something the other day that said that diversity and diversity meaning ethnicity meaning um, sex meaning um, all these different areas of diversity helps the economy because it helps organizations to flourish. 
Absolutely. With the evidence shows time and time again that diverse teams really thrive. Um, they're they're an asset to to businesses, and we have often heard heard over the years that, you know, employers and businesses that can't find the talent they need that they're going to shrink their operations within the regional economy. So when we know that they're proactive and and sourcing all the talent that's available and and the best talent available. That's going to yield job outcomes, not only for the people that they're directly hiring through us, but also for the Canadian labor market at large. So we have seen many of the businesses we work with um, see tremendous success, and we're eager to, to support more businesses in their thriving potential in that regard. Well, thank you so much for being here and for sharing what you do. We'll make sure that your information is available so that people know how to contact you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you for having us on this morning. No problem. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. I'm Shannon Woolley, host of Batter Up Beachville on Rogers TV. Join myself and Doug Harris as we learn more about the first recorded baseball game in Beachville. At St. John Ambulance, we're all about community. We teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services. All St. John Ambulance product sales and training registrations support these important services. Volunteer, donate, or enroll in a program today so we can continue to have an impact on our community. Visit sja.ca to learn more. At St. John Ambulance, we do more than save lives, we change lives. Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. We're back for season three. We've had the opportunity to see some great backyards and have some great barbecue. Join us, Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. You're watching Rogers TV, London. Welcome back. Mental wellness supports can be difficult to access, especially for children, youth, and young adults. Community Counseling Exeter is looking to provide more accessible counseling services for youth between 12 and 25 years old. This is a collaboration between Community Counseling Centre of London and Trivet Memorial Anglican Church. Hello, Alida and Patricia, and welcome to the show. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Hi, please share more about the Counseling Center for Youth. What is it? Go ahead, Alita. Okay, so the Community Counseling, counseling Exeter is um, a new uh, counseling center for youth that we're starting uh, this week, actually, November 1st. So yesterday was our first day. Uh, and it is for children, youth, and young adults ages 12 to 25. So we will be offering counseling services uh, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. And we also are offering, uh, we have an art therapist intern who is offering a art therapy group for youth ages 14 to 18 every other Tuesday evening. It's a, it's an art therapy group to help manage anxiety. Nice. And you know, services for the youth in our communities are limited. And so I was so excited to hear about this. How did it start? Well, it's, it, it's the Community Counseling Center of London, which is the sponsoring um, operating organization for Community Counseling Exeter. Um, that started a couple of years ago when Alita and I met for coffee and we were just connecting with one another and talking about some other um, opportunities. And I asked Alita a question um, which was, if you could do anything, and there were no obstacles, no money wasn't an issue, what would you want to do? And she said, I would love to have an internship program um, and, and really teach interns uh, in the spiritual care um, community. 
And I have always had this burning desire to have a free uh, counseling program, especially for people who, who aren't able to afford uh, or don't have benefits that support them. And so that's how the Community Counseling Center was born. And, and so we've just continued to have a whole, uh, just an incredible couple of years of growth. And we've had the opportunity now to train 21 interns with another seven more this year. And, and then we were approached by Trivet Memorial um, Church, Anglican Church in Exeter to see if we would run an outreach program for them. And so we're doing this as a pilot program and we're super excited. It's, it's a really interesting venture. So we're, we're really looking forward to seeing how, it, how it's gonna pan out. Don't you love how coffee can turn into so much more? Yes. <laughs> so share the share the vision and mission. Yes. Yeah. So to be able to offer um, affordable counseling services, we believe that it's a human right that all people deserve access to affordable counseling. And counseling services are so expensive. The hourly rate, right? Like one hundred twenty-five dollars an hour or or more. And so. Our counseling services, we're a not-for-profit, and we can offer um, services geared to income. So based on someone's income and the number of dependents in their household, we figure out what's an acceptable rate that they can afford. And 63% of our clients are receiving subsidized counseling at our lowest subsidized rate, which is $0 based on their income independence. So you can really see that many people have been in the last 2020, 2021 have been using our services and receiving that subsidized counseling rate. That is amazing. That is amazing. I'm in this same field as you are. And um, I do know that subsidized counseling is so needed. How can Londoners help? Big one is because you've heard about the need, and so a big one is by making a donation. Um, so we are uh, a charitable organization, and people can receive an income tax uh, receipt for donations they make. Um, donations can be made by e-transfer or um, through Canada Helps. We're set up there, so um, and um, and through our website, people can find out those links um, and how to make those donations. Also, also by referring people to us, if they know of people who need counseling, they can let them know about our services. Um, yeah, as we're new in Exeter, telling people about this new opportunity in Exeter, we have our first youth client tomorrow. We just started this week and we already have, already have a client. So that's uh, uh, really exciting. Well, congratulations. I wish you continued growth throughout Southwestern Ontario. It's much needed. You're so appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Huron Flooring offers a vast selection of pre-finished hardwood floors in a variety of colors, textures, widths, and finishes. We also provide resanding and refinishing of your existing flooring and stairs. Visit us at Huron Flooring, 782 York Street in London. Watch London Nationals Hockey at 7 p.m. on Rogers TV. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mario Elia, and I'm the host of a new show here on Rogers TV that we're calling Keeping London Healthy with Dr. Mario. So tune in Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and we'll see you then. Your mouth can do a lot of amazing things. And your mouth can save a life. Hi, I'm Tom Wong. I'm just one of close to 1,000 Canadians in search of a stem cell match. We need your help. A simple swab is all you need to register on the National Stem Cell Database. You could be the one to save a life. Find the hero in you.
watching Rogers TV. Welcome back. Human trafficking, exploitation, and sexual abuse is an international travesty. Unfortunately, Indigenous women are disproportionately affected by these crimes. If fortunate enough to survive, support is needed, and our next guest, Elissa Rose, who is a finalist in the Community Impact category for the prestigious Pillar Innovation Awards, is making a difference. Hello, Elissa. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Jennifer? Good. Thank you for asking, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Miigwech. I'm glad to be here. So you are the Indigenous Advocate and the Anti-Human Trafficking Coordinator at, at Losha Family Healing Services. You also lead the Anti-Human Trafficking Program, Okadinige. Absolutely. Can you share more about that program, please? Absolutely. So Okadinege started in May 2018 at Losha Family Healing Services when I climbed on board. Um, and it has grown tremendously. It is a beautiful program. Um, and our program supports survivors, victims, and those at risk of human trafficking within London and surrounding areas um, and beyond. We, during this pandemic, we've supported many. With that said, Okadinege in Ojibwe means he or she braids things. And that represents our three strand approach to combating human trafficking trafficking of Indigenous people, as well as all people. Um, so that includes prevention, which is key, awareness through education, as well as support services for survivors and victims. Oh, that's wonderful. And yeah. so where, where are you located right now? We are located at 343 Richmond Street, so right across from YOU at Richmond and York, right on the corner. You can see the lovely paintings out front. Okay. And are people able to drop in or do they have to make appointments? How, how can they reach you? Yeah. So right now there's a number of ways to reach us through at LOSA's at, for the Okadenegi program. And specifically we have Facebook, Instagram, you can contact us through cell phone, email, even just calling at LOSA's head office. Um, you can contact us that way. At LOSA does have drop-ins. If you're needing to chat with someone, um, engage with front desk to find out support services that are available, or even connect with someone on the Okadenegi team itself um, for other things, there would be appointments, intakes, those sorts of things, but anybody is welcome to stop in and gather information and find out what there is for them available. Wonderful. Yeah. And you were nominated for a Pillar, Pillar Innovation Award. I was. For your, for your work. <laughs> and it's it sounds like it's been amazing work. And so I just want to make sure that if there is a woman right now who is involved in human trafficking and they happen to be watching this segment, what is it that they need to know or that you that you want them to, to hear? Well, first of all, Jennifer, I want to say that question is phenomenal. I think that should be asked on many different shows and interviews and things like that because there most likely may be someone who would witness this and be like, oh, that's what I need. And so I think one of the big things for them to know is they're not alone is that they're loved, that there is somewhere for them to go. Um, and there is people who believe them and want to listen and are ready and capable to support them in any way. And so if there were a victim or a survivor on the call, I encourage them to reach out and then let it go from there. It's very low barrier, not a lot of questions, not a lot of paperwork. We're definitely there for the individual. Good, that yeah. is awesome. Okay, so how can the London community help? Well, I think educating ourselves is a big thing, something that we've been aiming and trying to do for a couple of years now. And as we know, the discussion of human trafficking in our city and our area is becoming more and more prominent as the light is shined onto this topic and this issue that has been happening for so long. Um, so education would be my first first request and for parents at home to be having conversations with their children with their family members about this and what that looks like more in the preventative way um, online safety healthy relationships teaching children and others boundaries and what that looks like so I definitely would say education and then and then seeking support if you need help with that we're definitely a team that can help parents and families and schools have those important conversations with families classrooms friends and so on Definitely. That is yeah. one of the main ways I believe that we're going to be Absolutely. able to combat a number of the different isms that are out there, the Absolutely. different issues that are out there through conversation. 
Absolutely. And, you know, and I want to just say one thing is I've, when doing this work for as long as that I have, you know, the issue is already there. And something I hear time and time again is survivors say, we just want someone to walk alongside us. We know the issues there. So educating ourselves to understand the issue and what that looks like for victims and survivors, as well as tackling that prevention piece, which is key. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Congratulations on your nomination and good luck. Thank you, miigwech. For more information about the vaccine and eligibility, visit healthunit.com. To book an appointment, call the number on your screen or book online at covidvaccinelm.ca. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca. Behold Emily Carr, painter, about to encounter the force that will consume her life. How tightly they sealed their secrets from me, humble and pleading before the great trees, awaiting the invitation from the spirit to come meet me halfway. Nothing is still now, everything is alive. At last, I knew I must see through the eye of the totem itself. The mythic eye of the forest. Seldom able to live by her brush, before she died in 1945, Emily Carr was in the first rank of Canadian painters. This is my country. What I want to express is here and I love it. Amen. Welcome back. Our next guest is a trusted advisor and advocate for culturally and racially diverse communities and is often sought after by the media for his deep knowledge in race relations and Black history. He has also been nominated for a Pillar Innovation Award in the category of community leadership. Please welcome Leroy Hibbert to the show. Hello, Leroy, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And congratulations on your nomination. Oh, thank you kindly. It's, uh, I look at it as a tremendous honor. So you, a lot of people know you from your work at LUSO as the Multicultural Outreach Program Coordinator. Can you share more about what it is that you do at LUSO? Okay, so uh, my portfolio. So LUSO Community Services is a multicultural, multi-ethnic organization. And so we do a lot of programs in the community that are geographically based, and, and some of them are not. And so uh, there's over 20 staff. We do a lot of, we work with newcomers, we work with families, uh, we work with uh, individuals that are having some struggles in life. And part and parcel of the uh, LUSO, as far as programming, my portfolio as a multicultural outreach program coordinator, I do a lot of workshops and presentations in schools for the elementary and also secondary panel, and also post secondary in the community. And those presentations, for the most part, have to deal with the idea of equity, but focused on the idea of anti-racism and cultural awareness. So we provide some sort of information for the schools from to the teachers, to parents, community, as well as the students. So they can have a framework and build some capacity, some sort of capacity in their environment so learning can take place. Yeah, you know, we, we were talking with another guest about the importance of conversation and just opening up that conversation because that's how we're going to learn from one another. I agree with that completely. I believe conversation is a seed to understanding. Uh, although these conversations can be uncomfortable, even though it's difficult to talk about, it's very, it's very difficult to live in this topic yes. of racism. So, um, but it's important to have it because if we don't, these sort of things are going to continue within our communities and also society. Mm -hmm. What are some of the um, conversations that you're having with students? <clears throat> what are they talking about uh, over the past year and a half? Because it's been a, a tough year and a half for everyone. Absolutely. Well, this idea of racism and what it looks like, you know, because when people, 
we have these conversations about racism, I think many times people look at the extremes as opposed to microaggressions, small things and comments people make throughout the day that impact people's lives. So we talk about what racism is and how it manifests itself and it can play on your mental health as well for racialized communities. And uh, this is not an accusatory session by any stretch of the imagination because we do need all hands to work out this situation because it is a disease that is plaguing our community. But really providing a safe place where people can be brave in that safety. That's wonderful. It's, it's important work. It's hard work, but it's important work. Thank you for doing that. Um, what are some of the other initiatives that you are involved in in the community? Well, I'm on um, with the school boards. Some of the school boards have anti-racism, ethnocultural communities, if you will. Um, and I'm a part of that to really help bring some another voice to the table, if you will, and provide some support. And also, in addition to that, I'm on the London Black History Coordinating Committee uh, in London here. And the idea of this committee, if you will, is to provide some information and uh, opportunity for people to see people of color um, in a different type of light. And so that, because we have contributed immensely to the progress of this nation and also globally as well. So we do things throughout the month of February and we have some signature events that we host. And uh, we also work with those that are not necessarily on our committee to also build what they're doing as well. So our, my hands are in a, a number of different places, but it's, it's all in a sense to build, uh, build community and uh, help people to achieve their, their goals. And you are being recognized for it. Congratulations again on your nomination and good luck uh, at the award ceremony. Oh, I look forward to it. And thank you so much for this opportunity. No problem. Thanks for being here. Take good care. Have a great day. That's a wrap. Thank you to all of our guests for being on the show and for using their time, their passion and voice to advocate for their fellow citizens. Please come back and watch us next week. And in the meantime, please visit our social media, like, share, comment. Until next time, be safe, take care, and happy Remembrance Day. TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. I'm giving up everything here in Seattle for a man that was cheating on me. Love makes you crazy. New couples. We met on a language exchange site. She was afraid that I was going to sell her organs. Bigger stakes. I will never go back to Ethiopia after what you have done to me and Avi. You're not going to keep telling me you're going to marry me. That's it! 90 Day Fiance, The Other Way. All new Sundays at 8 on TLC. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, some people used the A word. They called it an accident, but it wasn't. An accident implies that no one was at fault. But when someone impaired by alcohol and or drugs chooses to drive, they're fully responsible for the crash that can result. So please, for the memory of my brother DJ and the thousands of families whose lives have been shattered by impaired drivers, let's drop the A word. A crash caused by impaired driving is not an accident. watching Rogers TV.